Good morning, everyone. Thank you again for joining us. This is Mark Morris with Word of Faith Fellowship, and we are sharing with you what God has done in our lives at the Word of Faith Fellowship. We've had now over 180 members of our church who have shared about what Jesus has done in their lives. And it's, you know, it's amazing when I think about how God's brought us together from all different lands, all different parts of the world, uh, all different backgrounds. And he's really just brought us together as a church and knit our hearts together. And we just, we really love each other. God's joined us as a family. And so we've enjoyed coming on here and sharing with you how God has brought us and redeemed us from so many different backgrounds. And here we are, we're all together and we're all serving God and we just love what God's done. So today I have another Word of Faith member that's with me. Her name is Amanda. And she actually joined the Word of Faith Fellowship in 1988. God brought her here all the way from Texas and she does have a powerful testimony that she wants to share with you today of God's hand on her life. So let's hear from Amanda. Well, good morning. I want to thank all the faithful listeners um, that are listening in this morning and welcome those uh, newcomers to the program. I want to thank my dear friend, Jim. I've known Jim since 2000 and we connected up there when I worked for the public schools and he helped us out um, with, with our English as a second language department and he's been dear to my heart and thank you. Um, I wanna start to uh, to tell you just what God's done from, from day one. I was raised in Texas and um, I was raised by a Hispanic family and um, a very loving, caring, large family, very supportive. I have three siblings, two sisters um, and a brother that are older than I. Um, we grew up very tight knitted. Um, we had a lot of family gatherings. Um, if you were sick, you got uh, five or six phone calls from grandmother, not including all the others you got from all the aunts asking how you were. We were just very, very, very loving. Um, and growing up in Texas and, and growing up Hispanic, um, we grew up Catholic and when I was in third grade, my parents started seeking God. So my father started reading the Bible. My mother was watching um, evangelist programs on television. And my father started reading the scriptures, um, like in Psalms 115, four through eight, which talks about idols where they have eyes but cannot see and mouths but cannot speak, uh, hands but they can't handle, feet but can't walk, um, throats but they, they make no sound. And it, opened up his eyes to actually what they were practicing, we, we, what we were all practicing. And uh, the worshiping of idols was, you know, totally against God. And the Bible talks about how it's an abomination. God will, God will turn his face against you. Um, it, it, my dad began to read the scriptures also in, Le, in Leviticus 19 and 20 and Isaiah 8 and Deuteronomy 18, where it talks about necromancy and how it's a sin to talk to the dead. And um, how, why would you, why would you seek counsel of the dead for the living? Why don't you inquire of God? And, you know, us, we as Christians know that God is the only living God. He's the only one who answers prayer. He's the only one who has the power to answer prayer. He's the only living God. And my dad's eyes began to open. My mom and him began to uh, converse. And so they left the Catholic church, not only them, but actually our entire family, except for a, a few members. And they began to seek God. We began to go to other churches. And as a young person um, growing up in church, I felt like I needed a, a bigger youth group at one point. And I asked my mom and dad, uh, may I go to another church? And my parents told me as long as I would serve God that I could. And so I went to different denominations. And actually, I wasn't in my mind. I was seeking a, a larger youth group, but I was really seeking God. And I made a lot of friends going to other denominations, but I was never satisfied. I was never, I never found what I was looking for. And I was looking for Jesus. Um, and that's one thing with mankind. It doesn't matter how old you are. There, there's a desire in everyone's heart to know Jesus. They may not know that, but God created all of us to be able to serve him, to love him. And that void is because we don't have him. And so I went to these different churches and I even joined, uh, uh, you know, we had bilingual churches, Hispanic churches, English churches. Um, I ended up uh, becoming a member of, of a church and they had events um, at, at different, uh, different 
cities once a year. And I went, ended up in Austin with 5,000 young people, um, ended up, you know, being involved in all of that as far as uh, there was even an, an imperial concert, a parade, all these things that young people at that point wanted. But I found myself empty. I remember going to the concert and um, I remember this pastor saying, our young people are not staying here. We are leaving. And I thought to myself, how sad these young people are going to be able to enjoy this. But, you know, I, I, that stuck with me. And uh, music was an idol in my life. I slept with it, drove with it, showered with it, went to sleep with it. I sang uh, at schools, uh, you know, events, at churches. Music was my life. Um, it was an idol. Um, on career day at school, we dressed up of what we wanted to be, and I wanted to be a singer of all things. And music was just everything about me. So God started dealing with my heart. Um, and there was a scripture that stuck out to me that totally changed my life. Um, and it was in Isaiah 42 10, where it says, sing a song that has never been heard by the heathen world. And so that scripture opened my eyes to a lot of things because in, uh, in my household as a Christian, my parents would not allow certain things. Uh, my mother told me I was not going to listen to worldly music. My, my, you know, convictions began to come to them. And uh, I had my contemporary Christian music. Okay, well, I can't listen to that, so I'll listen to this. Uh, and basically, it was a trade-off. It was exactly the same. It was either pop or country or whatever. But the words, same music, same beat, same rhythm. But the only thing that changed is what it was talking about. But it still fed your soul. It didn't give you a desire and move you forward in a relationship with Jesus. So that was very stunning to me because music was an idol in my life. Um, and so I had to ask Jesus to change my heart. I, I couldn't do it on my own. Uh, even when my parents told me that I couldn't listen to uh, what they what we call worldly music, I still snuck in the house and listened to it on, you know, in my bedroom. And but when that scripture came, it, it came alive. It was a song to the Lord that has never been heard in the heathen world. It's in the Amplified Bible like that if you want to look it up. And it's never been heard. Well, everything I heard, it was just a replica of what was already out there. And so I began to ask Jesus to help me. And, and if it was his will to begin to change my heart, because we have no power of our own and the arm of the flesh to change ourselves, even if, even if we wanted to. Um, it has to be deliverance. It has to be God. It has to be the presence of Jesus to change the heart of a man because our heart is who we are. It, it controls our thoughts, our actions, um, our desires. It's, it's, it, it can only be Jesus that can change the heart, heart of a man. So God began to, to deal with me in that area. Um, and, you know, our life began to change as, as my parents began to seek God and uh, going to this uh, youth convention in Austin, Texas, just left me more empty than before I left. And I remember going to the house and um, I was at the end of my bed sitting on the floor and, and I just said, God, take me, take me somewhere where I can serve you. Somewhere where back then we called it on fire for God back in the eighties, you know, where that had that desire to serve God, it would come and it would go, it would come and it would go. So I said, God, take me somewhere where I won't be a roller coaster, where I won't be a yo-yo and I, you know, that I can serve you. And my um, oldest sister moved to North Carolina, which she's been on the radio um, program. Her name is Rita. She's the uh, Brazilian missionary, her and her husband, Greg. And um, Rita had moved here. And so we had started to visit. Of course, when one of us moved afar off, my parents always followed to see where you lived, where you worked, how the environment was, because they were so supportive. So we began to visit Rita. Um, she got engaged, she got married, and she had her first child. So at that point, I came to stay with Rita for two weeks to a month. I already had plans to move to San Antonio and um, had uh, a roommate, an apartment uh, ready to go and ended up coming to Word of Faith uh, as I visited several times before. And in that two weeks to a month, I began to come to the youth services on Monday nights and 
activities we had. I I became friends with Robin, uh, which is Sam and Jane Whaley's daughter. She and I are the same age. And um, I began to observe. Um, and let me step back and say this. Whenever, you know, I was growing up, um, my dad had his own business and, and, you know, we were very blessed financially. And um, so when evangelists and preachers came to um, to our city or our town, they always stayed at our house and we became host and hostess. And um, I began to see their lives, how some of them really wanted God and some of them were very different at home than they were behind the pulpit. Um, even found some people were not actually um, telling the truth to the con uh, congregation and gaining uh, financial uh, gain uh, out of lies. And um, so I got to see both sides of that and that always bothered me. So what happened was that um, when I came here and started spending time with Robin, um, I would spend time with her at home and that would include Sam and Jane. And the one thing I observed was Sam and Jane were always the same. They were the same uh, at home or at a restaurant or behind the pulpit. Sam and Jane were always the same. Um, and that really stuck out to me after seeing what I had seen since I was a child um, till I came here at 18. Um, I'd seen a lot and observing them, I, I began to see that they really, they really meant what they preached and they really wanted to be godly. And, um, that touched my heart more than anything. Um, you know, the one thing that I noticed in the church that, that really pulled on my heart was whenever things were preached, um, they preached about sin and most churches don't preach about sin, how sin affects you, the consequences, um, how sometimes sin is not what you think it is until you inquire of God to examine your heart, to begin to show you. And my life began to change. It gave me a desire to, to serve God. The one thing Word of Faith has always preached is don't take it from me. Go study the scriptures. Have a relationship with Jesus. I have been here over 30 years and I can tell you that has been one of the main things that our people have been have been taught is you have got to study the scriptures even to this day you know we've got to be in the scriptures that's you know have a relationship with jesus you can't make it to heaven on someone's uh you know coattail you can't make it to heaven because you know you go to church or you've done this or you've done that or it's not a merit system it's about being born again and having a relationship with jesus and so that began to draw me and I began to ask Jesus, you know, because of what was I, what I was being taught, I could see my life was changing and I was pretty stubborn and, and hard headed. Um, I never smoke. I never drank. I never did drugs. My parents were very strict, um, taught me morals uh, and I lived by them. My parents were uh, great examples um, in every aspect. And they wanted the best for me. And they, they taught us what they knew. And their, their words kept me. Uh, at times when situations or circumstances would come up, I could hear those scriptures that mom and dad taught me or something they said to me. And so parents, be encouraged. Uh, it doesn't matter what kind of uh, response you get from your children. The, the word of God doesn't come back void. Um, I'm 30 years old and it still keeps me. Um, so the word of God's powerful if you let it in, enter your heart. So, um, going back to, to being at word of faith, I ended up staying moving here, of course. Um, and, um, I continue, you know, growing, we have a very large family. Um, and, and truly it is a family since my sister left to Brazil. Um, as far as flesh and blood, I'm, I'm the only, um, uh, family member here, uh, as far as I don't have any family, except my church family, which after 30 years, you see people grow, get married, have children, and they become family. You know, when you eat with them, travel with them, uh, they become a, a major part of your life. And that's what the family of God is there for, not only to, to pray for you in, in those in those things, but to be a part of your life, you know. And um, I, I, I found out... Uh, when I was 21 years old that I was adopted and actually God told me. So I got on a plane and I went to Texas and I confronted my parents and I told them they couldn't lie to me anymore because God told me I was, I was adopted. And that was one of the, the landmarks of 
of hearing the voice of God. I was seeking God for truth when I was reading the Bible and I, I just kept saying, Jesus, I want to know truth. I want to know what you're telling me in these stories about Noah and Jonah and, 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 and apply them to my life. They're not just stories. Um, and so when you cry out for truth, the truth comes out. Uh, so in that, um, I asked my, you know, I told my parents that, and then my, my mom said, you know, si hombre eres pura India, which means, yes, you're pure Indian. My my um, biological mother was an American Indian, uh, supposedly my father was Caucasian, and um, they described my, my biological mother to me. She came uh, and lived with my mom and dad who raised me when she was six months pregnant and lived with them for three months, and then she left the next day. Um, so I was actually satisfied with knowing just that. Um, I was very um, happy as far as um, I, I was very blessed. And after her, hearing stories now, um, I can see God's God's power, God's keeping power. And at the time when I was adopted, God gave me Psalms 139, which says that he knew me in my mother's womb before I ever took shape or form. And all the days of my life were written in the book of life. And so I knew that God had his hand on me. I mean, he took care of me. Um, you know, the Bible says he adopted you in, in, in your when you were rolling in your natal blood. I, I needed God. And, and, and God, God did that for me. And if when my parents got the phone call from a, a friend of theirs that lived several hours away, they were, um, my mom wanted more children. And so um, they were talking about adopting me. And if I wouldn't have been adopted by them, I would have been adopted by my dad's brother or my dad's sister. And so I would have still been in the family. And I, I'm very grateful for that. And that just shows me, uh, you know, the keeping power of God. Um, a year ago this month, actually this week, I did my DNA and um, I, I, Really, like, as I said, I never had interest in, in knowing anything uh, about my biological family, but I felt like God told me to do it. And so I did. And um, I left it alone, actually. Um, a friend of mine uh, is very into this DNA thing, so he explained things to me, and that was fine. That was good, you know. But I left it alone until December, uh, a month ago. There was a, a new person who popped up. And I, and I did not look at it frequently. And he showed his picture, was very friendly face. And I just felt led by God to to contact him. So we talked. Um, we talked on speakerphone. I was in Texas with mom and dad visiting. And um, he began to tell me that um, my biological mother had passed away, um, sent me the um, obituary. And we were talking about what he had found out. He was also adopted. And his mother was my biological mother's sister. So we're first cousins. So we've talked uh, almost every day since then, except for this weekend. We've been texting, but we, we were talking. Uh, we've developed a great, great uh, friendship, a great relationship. We have plans to see each other, meet each other this summer. And um, the, the doors are opening. I am um, had other relatives contact me. And um, so I'm getting to tell them what Jesus has done for me. And how grateful I am. And, you know, hearing the stories of um, this biological family makes me even more grateful. I could have had a terrible life. You know, I was so grateful. I was, I am so blessed. You know, being adopted is not a bad thing. When people take you into your home and love you, like, you know, like you're, they're, you're their own. And it's, I have the same feeling that we're of faith. We come from different aspects of life, different cultures, different lands. And you can't tell that at our church. You can't tell who, who has money or who doesn't. You know, God treats us all the same. It's preached just to love each other and to help each other. And it's very sad. You know, what's going on out there? I've been here 30 years. It's so sad to hear the things that people say out of no, not having knowledge um, and just running with lies. And, you know, it's heartbreaking. But I'm so grateful for what God's done. I'm grateful for being here. You know, Sam and Jane have been nothing but supportive. Um, other ministers in the church, you know, Carol Reynolds and Brooke and Kent and Robin and Holly, you know, Mark's wife. And, you know, we've been friends for a long time. And 
just so grateful. There was a, a, a group of us who came in the 80s. Um, we were young back then. It was Mark and Holly and Frank and Robin and Larry and Rusty and Billy. And we all came very young. We had a desire to seek God, but we were full of the world and we didn't know God, but we wanted him. And we could see the changes in our lives now, what God's done and how he's knitted us together. And, you know, we 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 all have uh, different directions in our lives, different careers. Um, you know, Mark's here in Rutherford County. I'm in Charlotte and uh, working there. I live here, but, um, you know, we're we're in different places, but yet um, but we're together. You know, we're, we're strong together and we uphold each other. Right. It's just, you know, it's amazing what God will do in your life when you let him. It's amazing. And, um, you know, I just encourage everybody, you know, the one thing that, that we're taught in our church is when God says something, it comes to pass. And as you read your Bible, God will give you scriptures. God will give you those little nuggets of truth that will sustain you through circumstances. Um, you know, that you hold on to that, that, you know, God said and it, and it, and it, builds your faith and it builds your strength and your endurance in God and your desire uh, to, to love God, to seek God. And, you know, my parents prayed, um, you know, growing up, they, um, there was a time where I um, woke up in the middle of the night and heard a, a sound and I followed the sound and I, and uh, I ended up in my parents' closet with my dad on his knees, crying out to God speaking to God, weeping before God, groaning, you know, it's it, it, the scriptures that we, that we now know, you know, it was all coming to life. He was submitting his heart to God, crying out for God's will. And, you know, my mom prayed, uh, you know, we prayed all different kinds of ways in English and, you know, we wept before God, we groaned, we prayed strong. Um, and so when I came to word of faith, you know, that, those kinds of prayer were scriptural. They were real. They were, I'd already experienced them. I was already exposed to them, um, with my, with my parents. And so I just encourage everybody to get in the scriptures, to pray, to open up your heart. If, if, you know, if you don't know how to pray, just talk to God, just like, like I'm talking right now, just tell him what you feel, tell him where you are, where you're at, where, where, you know, your faults are, where you're, you know, where you're doubting, where you want to believe and where you want to seek him and he'll come to you. He'll come to you right where you're at in any circumstance, any situation. Um, you know, God wants to be a part of our everyday lives, not just when there's a situation, a hospital situation or, or a death or, or, or a financial need. I mean, God wants to be a part of our everyday, every moment, moment life. And so I, I'm so grateful for this opportunity and, you know, I just encourage everybody to, you know, to seek God. And uh, and if you don't have a desire to seek God and, you know, or, or, or you think you have to give up something, just tell them that and say, you know, change my heart, whatever. You know, the main thing is the scripture says when you don't know how to pray to say, you know, your will be done, your will, Jesus, your will. And, and you know, in, um, in Corinthians, it says, you know, that. It, he has things for us. Eye hasn't seen, ear has not heard. Um, you know, it's not even, God hasn't even come to us uh, with everything he has for us, which are good things. Um, it's not a bad thing to serve God. It's it's a very good thing. It's very uh, beneficial. You can go to bed and put your head down and have peace. Although that there's circumstances all around you, like a beehive, mm -hmm. you still have that, you still have that peace. You have that trusting and knowing that God's alive and God's real and and that he's going to take care of you because he has for me. And he's not a he's not um, he doesn't have any favorites. So if he'll take care of me, um, he'll take care of you. And man, that's so powerful, man. I was just thinking what a miracle you are. I was <laughs> I, I've known you for a long time. I actually all the way back. I remember when God was speaking to you and telling you that you were actually adopted and and it was amazing because I know you were you were so a part of you know your family that raised you and yeah. and the whole coming from Texas and then uh, as you found out you were adopted and I, I really think about the scripture in Ephesians 1 where it actually says that God in his love 
chose us to be adopted into his family. You know, and I, and I was listening to you talk about how God placed you in this in this really wonderful family. Your parents are wonderful and 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 your siblings and they really tried to do the best they could to raise you and 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 you find out details about the the other life you could have had and really God just had your hand, your life yes. in his hand. Yes. And I think about how he does that with all of us, you know, and he places us where we need to be. But yes. God himself has adopted all of us into his family. And, and just as your, your parents adopted you, they loved you and they took yes. you in. I think that, that God himself adopts all of us, you know, and it talks about in Romans that we actually can call him Abba Father because he is our personal father. And I think about that all the time when you shared about that. We're all adopted into the family <laughs> of God. And uh, so I just encourage everybody listening, whoever you are, whatever you come from, whatever your family's like, it may be a wonderful family. It may be a family that struggled. You have been adopted. God has ordained for you to be adopted into his personal family, to call him Abba Father and what a powerful testimony, Amanda. And I'm so thankful that you shared that and what God's doing. We thank you listeners for listening today. We've so enjoyed sharing with you all about Jesus Christ. He loves us so much. And I encourage you to open your heart like Amanda shared today. Open your heart to him. Let his love come in, into your heart and you'll be changed forever. So we're here on the program, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 8.30 to 9. We hope that you will continue listening. Thank you very much.